live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Letitia Wallace begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, Tasmanians are preparing for emotional reunions with families and loved ones when our borders reopen just in time for Christmas. Local hotels are predicting a busy summer season, already receiving interstate bookings. Living in Melbourne and separated from her family since April. Yesterday's border announcement, certainly coming as an early Christmas present for this born and bred Tasmanian. There were certainly tears. Um... <laughs> Certainly tears and a lot of text messages and phone calls between family and friends um, because, you know, we all hoped that that was going to be the case, that we could get home for Christmas. The state's borders opening back up to those fully vaccinated on December 15. Grace eager to come home and make up for lost time. A lot of belated celebrations about engagements and um, pregnancies and birthdays. So um, that'll mean a huge amount for me. Um, we've also had some illness in the family. While Mary waits for her son Nicholas to also land back in Tasmania from Melbourne after not seeing him since July. Miss him every day. Means more than anything. Yeah. All ready for a big Christmas celebration with her whole family under the same roof. We always get together at Christmas time. I cook Christmas lunch for everybody. Christmas puddings are over there cooked and ready to go. So yeah, it's pretty big. While locals plan to return home, interstate visitors are already booking their summer trips to Tasmania. Pleasingly, there are bookings coming in from New South Wales, Victoria and elsewhere in the country, so we're really happy about that. Hotels busily preparing for the peak tourism period. This date gives us a really good chance to plan for a busy Christmas. Uh, we've had a really tough time for the last few months and we're really all looking forward to a busy Christmas period. But Labor is looking ahead to when summer holidays end, urging the state government to ensure the safety of students and improve air quality in classrooms to suit a COVID environment. We want to make sure that all Tasmanian schools have good ventilation and that Tasmanian students can continue their education. We've seen other states moving in this direction, but we've heard very little from our state government. And we welcome what happened last year with extra cleaning and hand sanitizer in schools, but now we know that the, the strain of COVID has changed and we need to make sure our classrooms are a safe environment. Education Minister Sarah Courtney says data is being analysed to fully understand on an individual room basis the extent of heating, cooling and ventilation and will continue to work closely with public health and schools. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. The health sector is planning how to cope with likely COVID cases, with Tasmania's roadmap to reopen borders announced. Health bodies still hold concerns about how vaccine mandates will affect capacity, with a sixth of the workforce yet to show it's fully jabbed. For those working in health services, it's been a long year and a half since the pandemic began. Nurses and midwives and our care workers have um, been working incredibly hard throughout the pandemic um, and obviously are very fatigued. But the biggest challenge has only just appeared on the horizon, with Tasmania set to lower its Delta Shield on December 15. Frontline health services set to be bolstered. We have set a record for the largest increase in health staff recruited in a single financial year. So over 655 FTE and an even higher headcount. Extra nurses to go to work manning extra beds, ICU spaces and ventilators. There will be a demand on ICU beds and ICU nurses and those that are able to care for ventilated patients. We know that it takes three nurses in a 24 hour period to care for ventilated patients. It's also unclear how that extra manpower will be depleted by the vaccine mandate in place from next Saturday. At this stage, 84% of health professionals in the state are fully vaccinated. We need to be doing what we can to make sure that uh, those that can be vaccinated are vaccinated and working with those who can't to enable them to remain within the healthcare system working in a low risk setting. Uh, and there may be a hit to the workforce in terms of its capability. Uh, so, rightly, I think a lot of Tasmanians are concerned on how our health system will cope in a COVID environment. The disability support service workforce could soon face the same challenges, with a mandate for that industry announced yesterday. We've, we know that approximately 80% of uh, disability workers in uh, Tasmania are vaccinated and at Nexus we've got similar numbers. Those in the sector say it's vital, with many clients immunocompromised. Because we work very closely with vulnerable people who are, you know, it's not possible to social distance from them as we're working with them. 
More details on that mandate, including a start date, to be announced soon. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Heavy rain and cold temperatures have lashed Tasmania today as a wintry spell, spell blanketed the state. Falls of up to 100 millimetres and even snow are expected in some areas over the next few days. The rain causing flooding on roads at Carrick, Birralee and Bridge North, with motorists warned to be aware of the conditions. A sheep graziers alert has also been put in place in some regions. The Weather Bureau says conditions are expected to ease early next week. The rain didn't stop eager crowds from jumping on the rides and grabbing a Dagwood dog on the last day of the Royal Hobart Show. Armed with coats and umbrellas, showgoers came out to play games, pat some farm animals and enjoy traditional festivities. Organisers say it was still successful despite losing a day due to the snap lockdown. We've certainly gone close to our cap on every session so far, so very happy with that. Doesn't get any better than that really. But the feeling through the sheds and amongst all the exhibitors has probably been one of the best that I've seen in the last decade. The Royal Hobart Show celebrated its 200th birthday. Tasmania's best badminton players have taken to the court for one of the major events on the calendar. The City of Hobart Championships are taking place in South Hobart this weekend with a record number of players expected. More than 200 players will battle it out across 12 courts in singles and doubles play with all ages and skill sets catered for. The tournament will wrap up tomorrow with the finals in each grade to be conducted. The Education Union says students in the Hobart area are being shortchanged. According to the AEU, the federal government is not meeting the national minimum standard funding levels with a shortfall of $1,289 per child. It would mean schools would have the ability to provide programs that they know that their community needs and that their students need so that we don't see students fall through the gaps and we can make sure that our kids are receiving the minimum level of education that's required. The union says the missing money would fund an average of four extra teachers per school. Parliament lawns turned into a circus this morning as part of Step Up for Down Syndrome. Hosted by Down Syndrome Tasmania, the Family Fun Day brought together members of the local community. Circus workshops were the highlight as children learnt a few tricks of the trade. The event aimed at bringing together those living with the condition. They do so many things and it's just wonderful to see we've got so many members that have come up over the years to see what they have achieved and how they progress and uh, it's fantastic. Today's catch up the first since 2019 with COVID forcing the cancellation of last year's event. The Hobart Hurricanes chances of consolidating their place in the WBBL finals have been dealt a blow, with their match against the Adelaide Strikers abandoned due to wet weather. The rain causing havoc across the competition, with all three-day matches succumbing to conditions. Especially Under gloomy Launceston skies, Hobart was looking to build on their win against the Stars during the week. The Hurricanes batted first, with the opening pair once again broken early. Ruth Johnston gone in the third over. That's Sky straight up in the air. There should be an opportunity here for the strikers to take their first wicket and Wellington finishes it off. A slow start for Hobart. Their first boundary not coming until the fourth over. Priest was then out a short time later for 13. A drive from the Hurricanes captain falling straight down the throat of strikers captain Talia McGrath. Mignon Dupree and Nicola Carey had the job of building the innings. Across the crease, trying to open up the onside. Nicely played, yeah. But just when things were steadying, Carey was sent packing in unusual fashion. Oh, bat on that. McFarlane likes it, so does the umpire. And Gosh lasted just three balls oh, before a Amanda share. Wellington trapped her in front. Dupree was still swinging well, as the run rate ball. began to climb. Adelaide eventually claiming her prize wicket for 39, the South African holing Scott. out in the deep. But with an interesting contest on hand, the we weather intervened in the 16th uh, over. The match eventually abandoned, while the second in a double header at Invermay between the Heat and the Stars also fell victim. And late this afternoon, the blockbuster Sydney smash at Utahs was also called off without a ball being bowled. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Good evening. Devonport was the state's top today, reaching 18, 17 across Launceston and Burnie Hobart, 13. 14 at Strawn, King Island and Lowhead, 15 and 13 at Bushy Park. 
On the close-up, a widespread cloud band of low and middle level cloud extends over Tasmania. Further out, area, active areas of cumulus cloud can be seen over northern and eastern Australia and Victoria. Tomorrow shows a cold front to the east of Tasmania while a trough is seen over northern Australia. South to southwesterly winds tomorrow 20 to 30 knots swells up to 4 metres in the west and south and up to 2 metres in the north. A gale warning is current for eastern coast waters from the northern tip of Flinders Island to Wineglass Bay. A strong wind warning for all remaining coast waters and for all southeast inshore waters. A minor flood warning for the Meander, North Esk, South Esk and Macquarie Rivers. A flood watch for remaining northern, eastern and southern river catchments. And a warning to sheep graziers is current for the southeast, Midlands, east coast and upper Derwent Valley forecast districts. 13 across Hobart and Richmond tomorrow, ooze showers easing. Launceston 16, partly cloudy in Devonport, Deloraine 15. Partly cloudy in Burnie tomorrow, Strawn 14, a possible shower in Curry, And rain easing right across at Helen, Swansea and Whitemark. The UV forecast, high sixes across the state. Looking ahead to Monday, showers about the southeast and central areas. Tuesday, fine apart from light showers about the east. And Wednesday, fine and partly cloudy across the state. Capital cities, mostly sunny and 29 in Perth tomorrow. Sydney, 21 and a shower or two in Melbourne. And currently Hobart and Launceston, 11 and cloudy. Devonport, 11 and heavy rain. That's all for weather tonight, Letitia. Thanks so much, Jackie. And that's all your news for this Saturday evening. Have a lovely night and stay safe on the roads. Good night.